and watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today, we're gonna to be teaching you guys how to play Zephyrus. Now, for the people that don't know exactly what Zephyrus are, they are a deck that is comprised of four, four other archetypes that was once, it seems like, a unified archetype. These Zephyr monsters not only work in conjunction with each other, but they also work for their separate archetypes. So basically, Zephyr is the archetype amongst archetypes. It is a pendulum concept, and all of their monsters, for the exception of one, a pendulum effect is, while it's in your pin zone, you cannot special summon except for specific archetype card or Zephra monsters. So without further ado, let's teach you how to play Zephras. We're gonna start off by identifying the Zephra cards, and one is Ritual Beast Ze Tamer Zephrundi. The next is Ritual Beast Tamer Zephra Palissa. Now, both of these monsters uh, have effects when they are normal summoned, this one has an effect when it is Pendulum Summoned as well. Uh, Zephrindi effect is when this card is Normal Summoned to Pendulum Summoned, you can add one face-up Zephra monster from your extra deck to your hand, except Ritual Beast Zephrindi. You can only use this effect once per turn. Now, it's really good for the Ritual Beast just because it's another Tamer that has a different name. But for Zephyrus, we don't necessarily believe that it's a bad card, but it's not that much of a great card. It is a high scale, so it does have something going for it. Next is Ritual Beast Tamer Zephyr Palissa. This card is freaking awesome. Now, when this card is normal summoned or pendulum summoned, you can target one Ritual Beast or Zephyr monster in your graveyard, except himself, and special summon it to your side of the field. This card is really good because it allows you to tutor Zephyr monsters from your graveyard to your side of the field and possibly triggering their effects. My apologies for saying you don't get its effect for pendulum summoning. I'm so used to playing it in Ritual Beast, and it's kind of hard to pendulum summon inside of that deck. The next two cards that make up, or the next two archetype, the next, blah, I'm sorry, the next archetype that makes up the Zephyr series are the Shadol monsters. Now you have Shadol, Zephyr Naga, and Shadol, Zephyr Core. What Shadol, Zephyr Naga does is if this card is Pendulum Summoned or, or I'm sorry, if this card is Pendulum Summoned or sent to the graveyard, you can target one card in either player's Pendulum Zone, return it to the hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. What Shadow Zephyr Core does is if this card is Pendulum Summoned or sent to the graveyard, you can target one Zephyr card in your Pendulum Zone, except Zephyr Shadow Core and Special Summoning. You can only use the effect of Zephyr Shadow Core once, or Shadow Zephyr Core once per turn. These cards, eh, we almost wish that Zephyr Naga was a level four. It would make it a lot easier, seeing that most of the Zephyr monsters are level four or level three. Uh, level two definitely does hurt it, but again, they are, ha they, they they are monsters with Zephyr in the name, and you can do so many crazy stuff with these cards. The next archetype that comprises of these are the Yang Zing, Yang Zing Master Race. This is easily the best counterpart for these Zephyrus, and the main reasoning because is that it's so simple, but it actually has so much boom or bust potential inside of this deck. What Zephyr Nui, Secret of the Yang Zing does, is if this card is Pendulum Summoned, or when this card is destroyed by battle or card effect from your monster zone, you can add one Yang Zing or Zephyr Speller Trap card from your deck to your hand. Now that is amazing. And the fact that it's a level six, all of the Zephyr scales are one through seven, so this card is definitely easily able to be special summoned from your extra deck and gain its effects. It is the searcher of the deck. Next is Zephroxy, Treasure of the Yang Zing. If this card is Pendulum Summon or Special Summon from the main deck, you can target one Yang Zing or Zephyr monster you control except Zephroxy, Treasure of the Yang Zing. That monster is treated as a tuner. Also, place this card to the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. Zephroxy is really good because it turns all of our monsters or any of our Zephyr monsters to a tuner monster, allowing us to make synchro summons. A hidden great thing about it is that it returns to the deck. So if we do play one or two copies of Yang Zing monsters, which can be searched by Zephranu and special summoned by Denglong, it can also tutor back Zephrosy to our side of the field, making any of our pendulum monsters a tutor. This card is awesome. The next uh, archetype that comprises the Zephyr series are the Satellar Knights. Now we have Satellar, Satellar Knight Zephra, Zephrocticon, Zephrox, Zephroxition, I'm sorry, I'm, I have to butcher someone's name, Zephrocition and Satellar Knight Zephra, 
Zephrothabon. Zephrothabon. Okay, I said it right. Uh, what this monster does, the Zephrothabon, is if this card is normal summon, flip summon, or pendulum summon, you can target one other Teller Knight card or Zephyr card in your monster or pendulum zone, and one set card your opponent controls, destroy them. What Zephrothabon does, if this card is normal summon, flip summon, or pendulum summon, you can target one Zephra or the Teller Knight card you control in your monster zone or your pendulum zone, and one face up card your opponent controls and destroy them now both of these effects can only be gained once per turn but they are awesome easy spot destruction and us being able to give up a zephyr card or i guess if we do play some satellite knight cards isn't that hard for us because the deck is so good at generating advantage the last archetype that is included inside of the zephyr archetype or necros now necros is probably one of my favorite decks I, to be honest with you every archetype that we have mentioned in there is really good um, in its own uh science and zephyrs are nothing short of it what zephyr zephyr saber swords master of the necros does is you can tribute this card from your hand or face up your side of the field tribute monsters from your hand or field to ritual summon one necros ritual monster from your hand whose levels are exactly equal to the levels of the monsters you can only use the effect of zephyr saber once per turn this card is awesome being able to special summon zephyr or i'm sorry uh being able to special summon necros monsters from your hand actually ritual summon them just off of him is nothing less of amazing the next monster is Zephroxy, or Zephroxa, Flame Beast of the Necros. And when this card is in your hand or graveyard, if a face-up Necros or Zephra card you control except Zephrothly, Flame of the Beast of Necros, is destroyed by battle or card effect, while this card is in your monster or pendulum zone, you can special summon this card. Is destroyed by battle or... Oh, I'm sorry, while in your monster or pendulum zone. You can special summon this card. At first, I was like, wait, if it's already in the monster zone, how do you special summon it? But no, if it's in your graveyard or hand, you can special summon it. This card provides a 2,000 level 5 presence. The only bad thing about it is that, yes, it is level 5. So it's kind of hard to find a good spot for him. But nonetheless, um, Zeph Zephroxy can make him a tuner and you can have a level 8 synchro right there. So even the disadvantages, quote unquote, of the uh, Necros, or I'm sorry, of the Zephras, are an advantage all of these cards are awesome now the last zephyr monster is Zephyr. now if you guys have seen my top five underrated cards in the set you guys should already know you shouldn't be saying Zephyr if your breath smells like ass but what Zephyr does is during your main phase you can add one zephyr pendulum monster from your deck to your extra deck face up and if you do change this card pendulum scale, scale to the same as that pendulum monster until the end of this turn you can only use the effect of Zephyroth once per turn its monster effect states cannot be normal summoned or set must be special summoned from your hand or must be special summoned from your face up extra deck I'm sorry by attributing monsters you control including at least three Zephyr monsters and cannot be special summoned by other ways after that after you special summon this card, you can conduct one pendulum summon of a Zephyr Monsters during your main phase this turn in addition to your normal pendulum summon. You can only use this effect once per turn. Once per turn, you can tribute one monster, special summon one Zephyr Monster from your deck. This card is awesome. One of the cards that definitely ties the deck together is Zephyr because it allows us to tutor additional Zephyr cards into our extra deck, as well as tutor additional Zephyr cards to our side of the field from the deck. It also triggers Zephroxy. So just in case you guys wanted to know, uh, the ability to Pendulum Summon twice ain't nothing to mess with. I mean, it's just real good. It's, it's extremely good. That is it for all of the monsters that are archetype specific to the Zephyr theme. Now onto the spells. The most important card of the Zephyr archetype is Oracle of Zephyr. And its effect says when you activate this card, you can add one Zephyr monster from your deck to your hand. When you ritual summon uh, monsters, I'm sorry. When you ritual summon using a Zephyr monster or special summon, uh, ugh, this card is just, man, uh, it's a lot of text. And I don't want to give you guys any wrong information. Uh, your special summon using a Zephyr monster as material, you can activate one of these effects depending on the monster summon. If you ritual summon, shuffle one monster on the field of the deck. If you fusion summon, special summon one monster from your hand. 
If you synchro summon, choose one monster from your deck and place it to the top of your deck. If you exceed summon, draw one card, then discard one card. You can only activate one Oracle or Zephyra per turn. Now, this card allows us to do so many wacky things. If we are Pendulum Summoning, Exceed Summoning, Ritual Summoning, Fusion Summoning, and, and everything else in Synchro Summoning, and everything else in between, this card will give us all of the lights that we need to completely win the game. What we really want to primarily focus on is Synchro Summoning because that is very easy for this deck, and I will show you why a little later. Next is a card called Zephyr Path. Now, what Zephyr Path does is activate only if you have two Zephyr cards in your Pendulum Zone. While active pendulum scales of one and seven, with, with active pendulum scales of one and seven, my apologies. If this card is activated, shuffle all monsters you control into the deck except Zephyr. Neither player can special summon monsters except from the hand or extra deck. While you have a monster, I'm sorry, while you have a card in your pendulum zone, this card cannot be targeted by card effects. Destroy this card if a card in your pendulum zone is destroyed cards. Um, this card allows you to basically soft lock Vanity's Fiend your, or Vanity's uh, Emptiness to your opponent because it prevents special summoning unless it's from the extra deck or the film. So no special summoning from the deck. Uh, it's not that great of a card, but it's definitely something to consider. The next card I want to talk about is Zephyr Providence. Add one Zephyr card from your deck to your hand except for Zephyr Providence. If a Zephyr card you control will be destroyed, except during the turn that this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. You can only activate one Zephyr Providence per turn. Now we have three searchers inside of the deck, one Zephyron that searches spells and traps, Zephyr Providence that searches monsters, and Oracle of Zephyr that again searches monsters. Really awesome cards inside of this set. Or inside of this archetype, my apologies. Next is Chosen Zephyr. This card gains the effects depending of the number of face-up Zephyr monsters with different names in your extra deck. If you have three or more, monsters you control gain 100 attack and defense for each card in the extra deck. Or for each face-up card in the extra deck. If you have five or more, monsters you control cannot be destroyed by an opponent's card effect. If you have eight or more, uh, monsters you control cannot be targeted by an opponent's card effect. If you have ten, you can send this card to the graveyard, shuffle all cards your opponent controls from their hand, field, or graveyard into the deck. This card is meant to be a complete wipeout against your opponent. Sending this card to the graveyard will probably win you the game hands down. Unfortunately, it allow it requires you to play all of the Zephyrus, which doesn't really isn't really a problem because Zephyrus can tutor them into your extra deck, but it's still a trap card on top of that. Now, while we're talking about trap cards not being so great, we're going to talk about a trap card that's great. Zephyr Divine Strike. When a when a spell trap or monster effect is activated, uh, banish one face-up Zephyr monster from your extra deck, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Now, this card is basically an infernity barrier, allowing you to negate anything, and all you have to do is play Zephyrs practically, so it's a really good card. Oh, and it's a counter trap. Next is Zephyr's wo Zephyr War. You can target one other card you control, and one card in your opponent controls. Destroy them. If you have two or more Zephyr cards in your Pendulum Zone, you can activate this card from your hand. You can only use one Zephyr War once per turn. This card is really good because it's a trap card that becomes a quick play card and also a hand trap. Get it? It's a trap in your hand, so it's a hand trap. So you can activate it during your opponent's turn from your hand, which means Twin Twisters can't touch you, man. Which, they'll probably be targeting your scales, but we're not going to talk about that. Zephyr War is a pretty good card. Now, since we're done with all of the in theme support, there are a plethora of cards that you can play inside of this deck. Zephyrs are extremely splashable, and since you are giving five archetypes to work with, you probably can lean towards one archetype to increase or enhance the powers of Zephyr. A couple of cards I want to talk about is And this card is just awesome for tutoring other cards from your extra deck or, or to your pendulum zone. It's just a really good card. Duelist of the Advent allows you to search pendulum cards just for having cards in your pendulum zone. I mean, that's good enough, right? If there is a card in your pendulum zone, add one pendulum monster or pendulum spell. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it searches pendulum mucho. That, that's it. It doesn't search the Zephyrus. But it's still really good. Next, if you guys want to go there, you can play the Yang Zing cards. And I'm only going to put Chai Wen down because... You make Danglong, and then you get rid of the Danglong, and then you special summon Chaiwen, and Chaiwen can actually special summon Zephroxy if you really wanted to go there. But Yang Zing cards are really good inside of the Zephyr archetype, and they work extremely well. 
as well as nine pillars of the Yang Zing because it is still searchable by Zephranu of the Yang Zing. It's an extremely good card and it's another counter trap that you could play inside of the deck. Luster Pendulum is also a great card that could be played inside of the deck, mainly because you play Pendulums and it searches, so it's not a terrible card. Here's my other Oracle Zephyrus. Here, where was it when I need them? Some great Synchro Monsters. Now, there are really good X Seeds, but I just wanted to point out that Stardust Charge Warrior is probably MVP. Now, if you guys keep in mind when I said Oracle of Zephyr allows you to stack a card when you Synchro Summon, well, Charge Warrior actually lets you add that card to your hand, so it essentially searches any monster. Danglong for just amazing plays. It's easily one of the better cards from the set. This ancient Fairy Dragon not only allows you to destroy Ancient uh, Oracle Zephyr and add another one to your hand, but allows you to special summon monsters to your side of the field and possibly gain some effects. Naverna High Paladin is actually a, an extremely good card in here. It's a game in here, and it allows you to get extra cards. It's just nothing less of amazing. Crystal Wing, easy to summon. Boxy, a really good card. Coral Dragon, another six that you could play. But most importantly, Horus is a card that has not seen a lot of light, and this deck can take full advantage of it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I am excited to play Zephyrus. This card, this deck is going to be awesome. Let's get this video 100 likes so I can get you guys the build breakdown. Zephyr 2017, too strong. And to think that this deck was in the Scrub Olympics before.